camera from 40 years ago coupled with one year old technology current technology right and you can take photos from here all right in today's video we're going to see how we can get sharp digital photos from your 40 year old Hasselblad 500 cm camera this is a full manual mechanical camera without batteries without any digital storage because you can do it so why not so just how old is this camera why am i saying it's 40 years so there's a way of telling which if you open the film back and if you look at the rear of this i'm going to show you in the other setup here you will see a serial number now this serial number it goes something like uh wait a minute what does it say okay r u something now if you spell out the word vh pictures this victor hasselblad pictures it will actually correspond to 10 digits right from one all the way to zero so v is one h is two p is three and so on and so forth until s which is zero so because this here says r u you are going to match it to eight and seven so this is a camera from 1987 now there is a corresponding number on your film bag as well but this film bag says uc which means it is probably even older now this small nugget of information aside let's see what you can do with this almost 40 year old camera now how you take a picture on this this is a film bag right you, you wind it up remove the dark slide from it open up this take away the lens cap which is already taken off and you will see that the picture is here right so the viewfinder at the top and uh, maybe from this view you'll be able to see something else right so this is the viewfinder from the top you this is how you preview so this is your live view uh, from 40 years ago why would you want digital images out from this old camera so there are a lot of reasons maybe you like old lenses maybe you like to wind and maybe you like the shutter sound of this you may like manual focusing you may not like auto light metering so this you need an external light meter and you like to be very slow and deliberate in your pictures because you got to focus you got to set the shutter speed there's nothing auto about this camera so i did it why more because of the idea the romanticism of the idea using a very very old camera from 37 years ago coupled with technology that is one year old now this digital back from Hasselblad launched together with the 907X this is the CFV 100C now the CFV 100C is a 100 megapixel digital back this is a medium format sensor 44 by 33 mm so it's not as big as a 6x6 of course but well this is what you can do remove the film back after you got to put in the dark slide first okay remove the film back attach this digital back here and there you go you have a camera from 40 years ago coupled with one year old technology current technology right and you can take photos from here I, you have to set it up so if you go inside the menu system you will see a camera body and from the camera body you will choose 500 so here you go this is 500 you choose the correct camera and that's all you need to do get back out to the menu you can't see anything here so you got to frame your pictures using the viewfinder here so what do you do you crank it up and you can see what's inside right okay after you crank it up you fire off the shutter so fire it off again there you go you have an image this is an image of my ceiling right here old camera new digital back image voila so maybe let me just go a little bit slower so that you can see exactly what i'm doing and take it as a step-by-step -step guide and I'll move on to my B-roll so that you can see how this whole thing works. Okay, so let me put it aside first. This is the 500cm and this is my new 907X. Okay, okay, so this is how it works now. 
as live view. This is a modern camera. This is the old camera. So step by step, how do you do it? First, you remove the film bag if you have one. And this is how you do it. Just remove it. Next, you mount the CFV100C digital bag. Here you go. Okay. Catch on. Mount it. Then you turn on the camera. This is the only part that is being powered by battery. So as I mentioned earlier, go to camera body, set it to 500. Okay, done. Wind the camera here. One round. Stop. Set the aperture. So you set the aperture on the aperture ring here on the lens. This is a 50mm f4. So let's go f4. Shutter speed is also set on the lens itself. Okay, ISO, you got to set it on the digital back. Let's set to ISO 400. And you got to focus using the lens. So you got to flip up the viewfinder here. You got to focus using the lens right here. Right, the focus throw is actually on the lens itself. It is a pretty long throw. And here you go. And finally, you should using this shutter button here. And this is how we go. There you go. You have to wind after every shot. Wind it again after every shot. Fire it off. So this is how you do it. Now, why do I hate this system? It's for all the reasons why you would do it. Because focusing is a pain. you got to actually throw this focus ring. The focus ring is really, really fine focus. So it is really hard to focus. And you've got to use the whole viewfinder at the top. Right? You can flick out the focusing ring and you look through it. But it's still not very clear, right? So this live view system, this uh, mirror reflected is not that great. And when you move left and right, okay? So for example, look inside here. If I'm moving in from here, it actually comes in from the other direction. If I move in from here, it comes in from the other direction. So when you are panning it, it actually goes in the opposite direction, left and right. And there is no light metering at all. So there's no autofocus. Everything is just too slow. But the most important thing is I kept failing to focus right. I wasn't nailing focus. So there's one way to make it better. You can actually get live view on this camera because when you are trying to shoot, right, you don't get anything on the back because there is a mirror reflecting it up to the viewfinder. So there are a couple of steps. And these steps is actually quite cumbersome, but after you set it up for the first time, every time you need to take a shot, it is not that difficult. So let me just go through these steps. So the first thing you need to do is to set the lens shutter speed to bulb, B, here. The next, you got to wind the camera, all right? And on the camera body, and this is a very important step, go to the menu, set the camera body here to electronic shutter. So this is a very important step, failing which you will not be able to get live view. So the next couple of steps are a bit complicated. There is a mirror lever here, which you have to press in to release the mirror so that it doesn't reflect the light up to the um, viewfinder here, it will let the light from the lens go through all the way to the digital back. So you push this lever here. Yep, you should be able to hear it. All right. Then you've got to go to the shutter button here. All right. It has a lever here which you need to push down. Okay. And once you push it down, you release the shutter. Now, because it's on bulb, it's going to stay open. All right. Now the shutter is going to stay open. Then you go to the back of the camera. There's a LV here. You click on live view and there you go. Beautiful. 
so you get live view right here so the other step stays the same you got to set the aperture remember the shutter speed is no longer set here the aperture of the lens you can set it here still and that's the only thing you set on the lens itself the iso you got to go to the back of the camera and you set the iso here the shutter speed is also set here right so you set the shutter speed on the digital back the focusing is still done on the lens itself right so let's try some focusing here so the focusing is done here on the lens and you will be able to check the focus on the live view now if you double tap on this you'll be able to see a close-up shot and you'll be able to focus finely here so there you go it's a lot easier to focus this way and once you're done double tap out frame it properly this is what you see is what you get right because this is the sensor live view unlike what you see from the top viewfinder right which you can close now you will be able to use focus peaking as well on this digital back and once you're done you fire it off not using the shutter button but using this red dot here you fire it off it uses electronic shutter so it's completely silent so done you get back out it's a blank screen so what you need to do is to click on live view again and it is now live again so every time you need to take a picture you don't have to wind the camera anymore you just have to get out press live view and then you go again all right cool so that is all to it now why is this better because live view is we see we basically what you see is what you get right the exact framing itself no more further cropping it is also much easier to focus because there's peaking and there's zooming that is available and you can see how iso setting the iso will affect the picture directly when you set the aperture you will also see the impact on the picture itself right because like now i'm increasing the aperture size reducing the aperture size you can see how it impacts the picture now what is the problem with this because you are using electronic shutter you are bound to get problems with flickering with bending under artificial light because of electronic shutter the rolling shutter is another problem because it is a 100 megapixel sensor the readout time is about 0.3 seconds one third of a second so in that one third of a second when the sensor is reading out line by line and you start moving there will be rolling shutter issue as well now when will this work it will work for landscape right where is infinity focus there's lots of light slow moving objects easy to focus for studio portrait work where there's deliberate model movement and they know how to pose and hold a pose then it works well as well it is definitely not for street photography because this is way too heavy it weighs about two kilograms in this combination with the 50 mm f4 lens and it's definitely not for kids or pets where they move just got to them fast okay so this is all i have to share with you today and i hope you found this video useful in learning how to operate the old 40 year old camera 500 cm together with a digital bag some of the 1970s camera it will also work as long as it's from the 500 series 503 series a couple of others are also supported but this is my own copy so i'm sharing this with you i'll see you in my next video